Hey everyone, welcome back to another review. Today we're taking a look at the first figure from a brand new company, the Dino Hazard Irritator. So before we begin, I have something very important to talk about regarding this figure. I got this figure off AliExpress, and then after I received it, I was made aware directly from Dino Hazard that this figure is a pirated copy. So I've managed to piece together what is happening from going through the Dinosaur Toy Forum and what Dino Hazard has told me. The factory that produces this figure made extra copies and sold them to other retailers. Now the problem with that is Dino Hazard was not aware that this was happening and they're not seeing a penny from those figures sold to those retailers. So all those figures are seen on eBay and AliExpress, even though they are cast from the same materials and same mold as the ones you get directly from Dino Hazard, they're not gonna see any money from that. And for such a small company, that is detrimental to them. So if you wanna support this company, right now the only official online retailer is Yivy or YVY, I don't know how to pronounce it, which I'll leave a link to down below in the description. Everything Dinosaur should be coming an official retailer relatively soon. They're just putting that product through some safety tests. And any other companies that become official retailers, I'll also add them to the description in this video to help support this company. So I do feel terrible that I unknowingly bought this figure and I'm not supporting the company that made it. So please don't make the same mistake that I did. Definitely order from official retailers for this product if you want to get this figure. Because it would be an absolute shame to lose this company that has a passion for putting out nice dinosaur figures like this Irritator. They have an amazing Cacarodontosaurus that's planned to come out soon. And that thing looks huge and I cannot wait to get my hands on that. So it would be terrible if they went under before they could release more products. So enough about that. Let's throw this figure up on the turntable and take a closer look. So let's start with a nice 360 degree view of the Irritator. Irritator was a Brazilian Spinosaur. Dino Hazard is a Brazilian company, so it's pretty neat that their first figure is a species from their home country. The quality of this figure is great. Nice, solid construction, beautiful details. Kind of reminds me of old school PSO figures, and that is a compliment. Comes with a couple accessories. You got that nice lungfish accessory that's gripping in its hands, and the base. The figure is sculpted in a very active looking pose, but unfortunately that pose gives this figure some severe stability issues. The base is kind of useless for keeping this figure up. You kind of have to position the lungfish tail to be resting on the base to get it to stand, but it won't stand for long. Mine keeps tipping over, so I have some post attack jammed into the footprint on the base to keep this figure uh, upright for the review. And there's two versions of this figure. There's the standard and the premium. This one right here is the standard version. The premium one is supposed to have better paint details on it, but the standard one looks pretty good in my eyes. The main body is just pretty much a tan color. You have some dark dry brushing along these sides of the body and along the dorsal area. And you have a nice splash of yellow along the face with piercing red eyes. So yeah, a really, really cool looking figure. Well, let's just do a couple quick measurements. This figure is a nice 14 and a half inches long from the tip of the tail to the tip of the snout and from the base about three and a quarter inches tall. So irritating in real life was estimated between 20 to 26 feet long. So I put this figure somewhere in the 116 to the 120 scale range. And now let's turn our attention to the accessories that come with this figure, starting with this little lungfish. This lungfish is based off the extinct species Equinoxidus. I think I said it right. And uh, it's a really nice looking accessory. Some really nice detail on there. Kind of reminds me of like a Arapaima with the color scheme on it. And if you go down, you can see some nice scale details, some bright red and black on there. The head is nicely sculpted. The fish looks very surprised being carried around by a dinosaur. And then you can see these little ridges sculpted in here. And that's where the hand claws are gripping it. So that's a nice, nice attention to detail. So yeah, pretty, pretty neat looking little accessory. And just to put it in on the irritator, you just need to push it in between its claws and line up all those little ridge marks. It'll grab it pretty securely. And now moving on to the base. The base is really well done. Just looks like a nice, like a uh, sandy beach on a lake bed. You got some nice water ripples right here. You got a couple footprints for the irritator. You have some nice ripples from where the water dried on the beach. So yeah, really nice looking base. The underside of the base is hollow. And like I said, the base is you know pretty much useless for uh, holding up the figure. Uh, even without the base, my figure has a tough time standing, but I know plenty of people that have this figure and the figure stands fine without the base. So I might do some modifications on here. I might just drill a hole through the bottom 
I have like a little bit of a pin coming up and drill a small hole in the foot to try to keep this thing on the base because I really, really want to display this dinosaur figure. I think it's so cool looking. All right, let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details. Started with this beautiful looking head. I absolutely love those piercing red eyes on this figure. Really, really intimidating looking. You've got the nostrils high up on the snout. You have the beautiful yellow stripe. You have a little bit of a crest just before the eye. The snout is nicely sculpted. I think I read somewhere that the snout on the reconstruction of Irritator might actually belong to a different species. And the teeth are also really nicely done, done with a nice off-white color. As you can see, the jaw is articulated. It can close almost pretty much flush, and it can open up about that far and then let's just zoom out a little bit and let's take a look at some of the mouth details inside the mouth is really well done you have a small tongue in the back over here nice glossy coat to give it that wet look and let's turn the figure over and you can see the roof of the mouth is also nicely done they have some nice really fine scale work all over this figure beautifully textured figure it feels really great in here like i said it's a very solid feeling figure it has some decent heft to it and then going down to the arms, you can see the arms are beautifully sculpted. Just love the details on the claws. A lot of nice washes and gloss coat to give those claws a nice shiny look. You got a little bit of a white stripe along the shoulder. And then the top of the body is this really dark coloration. And I just love all the folds and wrinkles on this mixed in with the scales. Just gives off a very active look for this animal. And then going down to the hind legs, you get some really, really nice muscle definition sculpted in. Small folds and wrinkles over those muscles. And then going down to the feet. Feet are really nicely done. Same thing, they're painted nice and glossy like the hand claws. And then going down to the tail, you do have a pretty heavy seam line right here. And that's why I say it kind of reminds me of like old school PNSO figures. They used to have like pretty heavy seam lines in. Maybe when they get better at making figures, we won't see this too much. It's not too distracting, but it is definitely there. And then going down to the tail, get some nice scale detail, more folds and wrinkles. And then that's the end of the tail. And let's take a look at that nice active foot on the other side. That really, really conveys the sense of motion, the way this hind foot is sculpted. So yeah, this figure is really, really great in my eyes. And I'm really excited to see what else Dino has, it in, store, has in store for us. Moving on with comparisons, the only other irritated figure I have in my collection is the Mattel Jurassic World one. The only other irritated figure I can think of is the Collecte one, which is a great looking figure. Unfortunately, I do not have that one. And let's compare it to some of its relatives. Here it is with the Collecte Baryonyx. And here it is with the Safari Limited Barry. And one more Baryonyx. Here is the thing that whoever was at Papo that did copious amounts of crack decided to call this thing a Baryonyx. And moving on to Spinosaurus, here it is with the huge GR toy version. Oh man, this thing's so big, I'm gonna have to move this very gingerly because I don't want this irritator to fall off the base. Here it is with the GR toys, Spinosaurus, and let's get this big one out of the way and here it is with the papo spinosaurus and let's do one more spinosaurus here it is with the pnso spino and here it is with another south american dinosaur the papo chilesaurus and lastly we always have to compare it to this here it is with the pnso tyrannosaurus rex so final thoughts on this Dino Hazard Irritator. I think it's a great looking figure. It has some serious shelf presence. It has a nice active looking pose. Paint scheme is great. The detailing is fantastic. The articulated jaw works really well. Love the accessories. Now my minor critiques on it is obviously the major stability issue that this figure has. A lot of people have problems getting this thing to stand up on the base and it barely stands off the base. But like I said, it's their first time figure. They have plenty of times to improve that. And the only other critique I have on it, the scale. It's a really big figure. It's not gonna scale with much in your collection. I'd love to see this get re-released as a 135 scale sometime in the future. This figure retails for around $60. And remember, only order it from official retailers. They will be listed down below in the description of this video as more retailers start carrying this product and they're officially supposed to be carrying it. I'll be adding their links down below to this video as that time comes. And remember, if you see any on AliExpress and eBay and stuff, those are not official sellers. So please don't buy from them like I unknowingly did. 
before I finish this review, one of the sculptors at Dino has it commented on the Dinosaur Toy Forum. I guess they're working through their issues with the factory. From what I can gather, I think about a hundred of these were produced on the side. They were considered surplus and they were sold to some retailers, but I guess the factory didn't know that they were going to hit the international market and that's how all this kind of got started. So they're currently working through that and I'm glad they are because I hate to see a company like this fail. I'm really excited for what products they can offer us in the future. Their car car gear Dontosaurus looks absolutely amazing. That thing is going to be a beast when it comes out. So that would do it for the review. I have a couple new Mattel things that just recently came in. So I'll be working on the reviews for those this weekend. So be on the lookout for that. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously. And it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.